Um, I mean, uh, we were um, excited to see that we, we were in the lab and we, we what well, we always do, we measure uh, um, oxygen uptake and when people run on the treadmill and the way that the data comes in on the computer typically um, is a little bit uh, fluctuating. So it, it's hard to tell differences between shoes regularly when we talk about small differences. Uh, but this was actually the first study which I did where I saw already right while we were doing the testing on the computer screen that, that there were differences because the differences were so large that um, you could just easily see it on the screen without having to do a careful analysis. Uh, of course, we then did a careful analysis to, to, to calculate averages and then we, we saw that for all the subjects uh, they were performing uh, using less energy in the Nike shoe and uh, on average uh, we, we saw that among all the 18 runners that was uh, 4% on average which was like unprecedented in relation to footwear. We were just uh, excited to see uh, that um, after trying for, for decades, the, the footwear industry finally uh, uh, had uh, managed to, to come up with a, a, f a shoe product that would actually perform so well. So I never felt as it would be too much. Um, um, uh, it, but it, there was definitely a lot of uh, innovation that was put into this one shoe that all of a sudden combined worked very well, which was uh, surprising because um, before we had only seen either changes in the foam or people had applied a carbon fiber plate, but this time the way it all integrated and then without making the shoe any heavier, uh, all added up to things. But um, not necessarily... Um, for me, thinking that that would be too much, um, it was just uh, surprising to see that it worked, but also did make sense when you start adding up all the small changes we had seen in the in the, the years leading up to this new innovation. They made it sound around breaking two that they had the shoes specifically tuned for Elliot Kipchoge and the other two runners. Um, but it, the, the rule probably purposely is really vague where it, it talks about the type of shoe should be generally available and then the, the question is what is a type of shoe is that a marathon shoe is that a marathon shoe with a carbon fiber plate is that a marathon shoe with a carbon fiber plate with a curvature of x radians um, it's really coming down to how specific that is and um, on, the, on the one side it's um, for leveling the playing field uh, it makes sense to have a rule like that so that everybody at least has access to the same shoes at the same time, I can see why it's lucrative for footwear companies to innovate in better products um, if they can give their athletes uh, an edge over the other athletes. So it's, it's sort of like this rule, if it's implemented very strictly, would limit um, probably the innovation at the companies because there's less incentive for them to, to build a better shoe. Um, but yeah, it, it really kind of come down into the implementation of these rules and um, and it will probably put back innovation a little bit, but in, in the end, uh, we're, they're still will be trying to make better shoes at last. Uh, for them, it's, it's no longer about um, who is gonna win the gold medal. It's more about, um, in the long run, who's gonna be the building better shoes.